Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome here to the Royal Society this evening. Uh, my name's John Nagg. I'm Head of Research and Consultancy for English and Examinations at the British Council. This time, we're going to talk about the language itself, the English language. And this event is a joint event between the British Council and the Oxford English Dictionary. We're privileged to have a, a great panel with us this evening. On the panel is John Simpson, who's the chief editor of the Oxford English Dictionary, fellow of Kellogg College, Oxford. He's the editor of the Oxford Dictionary of Proverbs and the Dictionary of Modern Slang, which we hope will come in handy tonight. He has publications by the Bod Bodleian Library, and um, amongst his many specialist subjects are the minor characters of James Joyce. Prudence Raper comes from a family of writers, um, has spent a career writing in the public relations field, not only press releases and speeches, but also doggerel and scurrilous verse. She's a singer who writes for the classical music magazines, for classical music magazine. Prue tells me that the school, you tell me that, Prue, that the schools you went to were hopeless, but you learned your English in the family, good English in the family, and you've always been a pedant. She's passionate about English language, and Prue is a former secretary of the Queen's English Society. And uh, I've, I've wanted to ask you this, Prue, uh, how many pedants does it take to change a light bulb? Change, and surely you mean replace. Perhaps I do. <laughs> Romish Gunasekra was born in Sri Lanka and has lived in Britain since the 1970s. His first novel, Reef, is on the A-level syllabus and was shortlisted for the Booker Prize. Further novels like Sandglass, Heaven's Edge and Monkfish Moon have collected accolades and had wonderful reviews. Romish is a member of the Council of the Royal Society of Literature and we have his latest book here, The Prisoner of Paradise, and I think Waterstones will still be open when you get out after a drink. <laughs> and if you can nip back, and I'm sure Romish will sign it for you. Actually, you could do Kindle now. <laughs> Henry Hitchings is the author of three books on English language. Most recently, Language Wars, which is a history of arguments about English usage. Henry is also the theatre critic for the Evening Standard. So thank you for joining us, Henry, as well. And can we have a round of applause for our panellists, please? <laughs> so our first question is from uh, Hewan Japes over here of English UK. Yeah, good evening. Um, my first question, why do you care about English? and? What have you been doing about it? Romish. Me, right. <clears throat> what have I been doing about it and why do I care about it? Well, I care about English because it's, well, as a writer, I suppose, it's more than just the, the tool that you use, I suppose. Um, if, you were, if you were carving wood as a sculptor, then you'd be with a piece of wood. This. If you're a writer, it's a bit like you're, you're using, you're actually growing the wood as you, as you use it. So it's a, it's a deep connection to the language. Um, and English, I suppose, has fed me through the years. You know, it's fed my imagination through my reading. Uh, it's a close relationship. It's a sort of, uh, sort of love affair, I suppose. Sometimes I move away from it and come back to it. Um, it's, it's something that I like to use because it's a very flexible, malleable language. It changes. Um, what have I done about it? Well, I suppose I've been writing books. So maybe, I don't know, over the books, maybe half a million words, I suppose. A labor of love. Phil? Well, I have always been passionate about English and uh, read dictionaries from an early age, which makes me sound <laughs> very improbable. Um, I decided before tonight I'd better count the number of books which I had in the house about English, the English language or dictionaries, 
I got up to 40, and then I decided to stop. I couldn't believe that I'd got 40 books about English. Um, what do I do about it? Well, I joined the Queen's English Society some years ago, and um, I also carry a, a marker pen with me for um, putting, in a, putting in apostrophes. Uh, <laughs> I haven't yet got out of my car to do anything about those signs you see on the side of the road which say, advanced warning. I don't know what an elementary warning is. Um, <laughs> Good. One of your readers then, John, can you? Sorry? Who is one of your readers? Oh, yes. <clears throat> well, Over to you. What, I, I'm interested in recording the language from the earliest period up to the present day. I'm fascinated about the, the links there are between the meanings of words and the history of words and the society out of which they come. So for, for when, I, when, I'm, when I'm working on the OED with my colleagues and we take a word like uh, magazine, for example, um, what's important for us is to see the, the run of, uh, of, of meanings from Arabic into, French, in, into Spanish, in, into English, and then bifurcating and trifurcating um, from the sense of a storehouse, which it originally had in, in Arabic, into um, a, a storehouse of uh, bullets in a, in, a, in, a, uh, in a gun, or a storehouse of uh, information in a, in a, in a, in a book. Um, it's those sort of networks and links that I'm interested in. Um, I also care about how definitions are written. Um, in the old days, the OED really had really quite formal um, definitions. And I think it's uh, um, the uh, changing that style into uh, an elegant formality of today is important. Um, and I try to get the editors working on the OED, of which there are about 70, um, to maintain that sort of level of standard in, in, in describing the, the, uh, the, the meanings they're writing about. I also think a dictionary entry uh, and I'll talk about dictionaries because that's many what I know about, should have some sort of poetical structure. I think you should be able to look at a dic dictionary entry and have a, have a sense of what the word, uh, how important the word is in the language, and uh, if possible, um, how possibly how the various subsenses senses are, are connected. Um, when, I, when I was working on new words only for the OED, I used to carry around a little jotter in my back pocket um, and whenever I heard some, um, a word or a meaning that I thought wasn't in the OED or wasn't covered by um, dictionaries' coverage of the language, then I'd jot it down. Um, that worked fine for two or three years, and then um, I forgot when I put my trousers in the washing machine um, <laughs> that the jotter was still there. Um, the first time I did that, I got another jotter. Um, but now we've got such good mechanisms for catching words, I... I, I um, I, I don't have a jotter, but I do still have my trousers. <laughs> Good job. Henry, what have you been doing? Uh, well, I think you've already answered that because I've written three books on the subject. But, I mean, I think I should start by saying I care about English because, as a native English speaker, English is the medium which I use to project myself into the world. And as a journalist and a writer, it's also a medium which enables me to earn a living. Um, but there's another point which no one's touched on, which I think is pertinent, given that uh, we're here partly under the auspices of the British Council, and that is that English is now one of Britain's few significant exports, uh, and it seems to me that maintaining standards of English is essential to making our capacity to export it in a meaningful way sustainable. Also, like John, I'm interested in the idea of language as the archives of history, uh, one of my books, which is called The Secret Life of Words, is about words that have been assimilated into English from other languages. And I think of individual words as essentially fossil poems. I think each word provides us with access to history. And the English language is a wonderful historical document, a kind of tapestry of the history of the English-speaking peoples.